What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Heat and Soul Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Vic Lloyd. Uh, how are you doing today, Vic? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm ready to get in this interview. Uh, Hi, yes, I know sir. you guys are going to see another part to the video. Actually, we were recorded in Chicago and we sat down, but uh, that that footage got it got corrupted. We'll say that much. Uh, <laughs> but me and Vic are going to be talking today, and you guys are going to hear a little bit about him himself. Uh, he's a shoe dude. He's really cool. So let's just talk about it. Vic Lloyd, who are you? Who who are you? Uh, I'm Vic Lloyd, Chicagoan, Southsider. Um, I love my city. Uh, I love being a father. You know, I love fashion and sneakers. It's been my life. Girl. That's what he. That's what he's about, baby. That's what he's about. <laughs> so you said fatherhood. What? How? 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 How is that going, man? How's that going? Uh, yeah, man, I love my little guy. His name is Lloyd. Um, yeah, I just love spending time with him, really watching him grow and teaching him things. And just, you know, we have a great time together. So I love That's being good. a dad. It's awesome. That's great to hear. And does it, does it inspire you? Um, inspire. Um, I won't say inspire. It motivates me, though. Okay. It motivates me to be better, be better for him. And, um, like just trying to just show him, you know, the way to be a man and grow up in this world. So, okay. So let's talk about your personal life. So, what do you do? What let the people know? What does Vic Lloyd do? What is he? Yeah. Um, I do a lot, but uh, you know, I DJ. Um, I design clothes. Done some collab sneakers. Um, a lot of just different things. Uh. Swiss Army knife of people, I guess. I do a little bit of everything. That uh, is very true. My pandemic passion became golf. I started golfing. So uh really, really found a new love out of something that I never thought I would get into. So that's been amazing. So, yeah. I mean, there's a lot. We'll get into all that in the video. You guys will hear all about it. Um, but let's just start. Let's start from the very beginning. How did you grow up? Um, yeah, so I was born in Chicago. Uh, so for uh, a while, my mom moved to uh, Topeka, Kansas. So I moved to Topeka with my mom from the time I was like three to 10. But I was always spending my summers back in Chicago uh-huh. with my dad. Um, and then like when I was 10, it basically I started living in Chicago full time and would go visit my mom part of the summer. So that's really how I grew up, like mix of like small town and big city. Um, I guess it kind of... Um, made me aware of like a fashion sense of like really having two different opposite polling things kind of pulling against each other. So yeah, that was cool. Yeah. That's real. Cool. What, like when you were growing up, what did you, were you into fashion? Was fashion a big thing for you? Like, especially being from Chicago and seeing everything. So was fashion a big thing for you back then? Um, fashion was more so, a thing I was exposed to a lot because living in Chicago with my aunts and my grandmother, I used to just go shopping with them every Sunday when I was growing up. So I just used to be around clothes and picking stuff out. And then as I got older, kind of using that to develop my own style. So, you know, I think from that, I still have that bug is I go shopping all the time. I just love to go shopping, whether I buy something or just seeing what's new. Like, I just like to go shopping and checking stuff out that's that's dope because does that does that give you insp- inspiration for your clothes like what you a, design a little bit. does that a ever give bit. like do you ever see something because we talked about art and do you ever see something because you really like going going outside and seeing stuff outside ins- inspire uh, it inspires you correct yeah um i'm a people watcher you know i pick up stuff from looking at all different types of people people going to work people going to play a sport and just certain things like accidentally might just come up of of a colorway off of like two things I saw on the street that like I was like oh man those colors kind of weirdly go together like stuff like that you got to kind of be inspired by your surroundings yeah I I remember we were sitting down and you were like talking about leaves and how like the color palette like color colors mixed together and that that's really cool man how that that, (laughs) like you think outside the box no, I, I mean, try to a little bit. Yeah, you do. Uh, your stuff is very cool. Uh, I'll throw a picture up on screen of his shoe. 
uh, but or his shoes, his multiple shoes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Don't 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 uh, underdo it, but uh, no, he's got some really dope sneakers. Uh, Let's talk about your brands, your free eight, your uh... um yeah. So brand wise, I have a free agent. This is one of the hats truckers. New brand officially going to launch uh, all the way um, in December. A special event we gonna have in Chicago. Um, so I'm doing that. I'll have my big homie Sensei by Vic Lloyd brand. I've always had. Um, I have the golf brand and community that I have with a couple partners called A18 Golf. Okay. Then we have the print shop, which is a Black Cactus print house. So we can print your goods and stuff like that for you to um, help anybody starting a brand or just wants to market something they got going on. So those are like the things that I'm working on now. And you probably hear about more in the future. Yeah, we do. I keep up with him on Instagram all the time. I always, <laughs> everything he's doing, the new free agent, dude, the free agent prints that you had, those were super cool. The uh, the the shirts, those were super dope. Um, but what what do you love about Chicago? And then what that'll lead into what keeps you in Chicago? Um, I just love Chicago because I feel it's like the balance of a New York and an LA. Okay. Um, like uh, just like I'm pace wise, like New York's very very fast paced, yeah. and LA is more slow, more chill. I feel like Chicago is like the perfect mix for that. Like it's like a good medium pace. You can get involved in a lot and you also can stay out the way if you want to. Yep. Um, I love my city because I actually like seasons. I like that the weather changes. I like you get to wear different things, you know, but I tell everybody like Chicago is the best place in the world in the summer. So it's hard to trade that. Yeah, it is. We come up there about twice every because we're not too far. So we come to Chicago. We're in yeah. Chicago all the time. We've been to Chicago four times this year. So I mean, I agree with you. Chicago, you have all the seasons, and there's so much to do in Chicago. Exactly. There's so much to do, and there's reasons to well, say. What in keeps Chicago. keeps me in Chicago is is I always preached that I wanted people to love their city, and it's going to love them back, and that we didn't have to go to other places: New York, L.A., Atlanta, Miami, any of those other places. To be successful, we could be yep. successful in our own city and build a culture here where people can expand what they're doing and build an industry here. Fashion, yep. music, the arts is all stuff that we can build here. And I feel like that's growing. That's what you've done, though. That, that That's exactly what you've done. And I want to congratulate you on that. That's super dope, man. That's super cool that you can do that. Now, getting into brands, what brands did you wear growing up? When you were growing up and you were a young kid, my, let's say my age, right? My age, a little bit younger, but what brands did you wear growing up? Um, Yeah, when I was your age, I was what, in high school. Um, I went to private school, so we wore uniforms. Okay. So that kind of, like, played with my style a little bit, trying to get use out of wearing uniforms. So I wore a lot of, like, polo and Tommy Hilfiger, and then on the, uh, like, the streetwear side, I wore a lot of... uh. Like Echo back then, yep. Academics, a bunch of brands that was coming up, Triple Five Soul, stuff like that. I always liked the brands that was a little bit different. Um, so it's a lot of stuff. And then, like, you know, once I got into like being into streetwear, it became like 10 Deep, Stussy, Bape, like all these things was like that, you know, like people in like my city and like weren't really wearing. So I always like kind of made myself a little different from like the style choices that I made. And I was always searching for new stuff. Yeah. Something different, as you said, like, yeah. like that's what I like to, I mean, it's always cool to wear different stuff. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That nobody else has. It's not, I wouldn't say it's not cool, but like, it's not cool to wear stuff that everybody wears. If you're, if you're yeah. in a big group, it's always cool to be different. I get, I, that's, that's how I feel at least. Yeah. I think it's real cool to stand out. And yeah. be yourself, and I feel like the easiest way to define yourself is by the things you decide to put on. Yeah. So that's what I usually tell people is like, you know, um, if somebody doesn't know you for anything, you know, they see your style, they see what you have on, they see what yeah. you put on, and they can gather from that. So, what, what, who, or what influenced you in fashion? And then we'll get into DJing. Like, what, who, or what influenced you into those type of things? Well, influence is like kind of like a hard to say um because like I just influenced by so many things but like I always tell people so the easiest way to put it 
is I always tell people that my style is based off the idea if uh, Nirvana and Wu-Tang went to high school together. Like, that's kind of like alternative hip-hop, like all of those deep grunge, like street, like all those things are mixed into my style to kind of make me who I am. Okay. So what's your favorite part about your style? Like, what, what, what do you like? What, what, what's uh, different about you? I like that I'm fearless and I kind of just wear stuff that I like. I really don't go pretty much off of what other people are into at the time. It just so happens that, you know, the stuff that I'm doing sometimes just always kind of remains kind of cool. So people are just like, oh, man, I wouldn't wear that, but you look cool. So yeah, it works it's like for me. You can you can take a shot at it. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna take a shot at it no matter what. No matter what the outcome is, you're gonna take a shot at it. And that's what's super cool. Yeah. Um I think you've influenced what? in fashion indeed. I don't know. You don't that's know that's not nothing that I really care about. Hopefully people say a lot of people, but I don't really I don't really look at it like that. You know, I I try to do my best to inspire people, try to do my best to make people want to be themselves. Cause that's really what all I teach is I want people to be, be the themselves. best them, not be the best me, be the best them. And, um, so I'll lead by example. That, that's super cool. And then you're, you're, I mean, if you ask anybody the, the, from Chicago, they're like, well, who's, who's really big in fashion. They'll say Vic Lloyd. Well, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I I'm up there, I guess, but you're you know, a very, you're, but you're very humble about it. Well, I just try to be the best me, man. And me, I'm trying to work hard. It's a lot of goals that I still want to accomplish and other things that I want to do. And so um, I just try to focus on keeping my head down and accomplishing those things and not really be too, get too caught up in the hype. Okay. Can you talk to us about, can you tell them about Fat Tiger and what Fat Tiger was uh, when you were? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Fat Tiger. Uh, well, shit. Fat Tiger is still, that's our family. That's, uh, we did that. Fat Tiger was open for, almost nine years. Um, and we just did something different for the city of Chicago, just brought a different lens. And, uh, you know, just sometimes certain things just run their course as far as how you look at something and mm -hmm. do it. So uh -huh. I feel like um, Fat Tiger is our family tree and we all still attach to it. We all brothers still. And, um, but everybody's just kind of doing their own thing, going on their own journeys. And who knows, maybe in years, you know, it, it, do like a reunion Wu-Tang show or something. That's super dope because, uh, and then like you talk about what you did for Chicago and what that, what that meant to Chicago. And that, that was super cool. That was super cool. And what yeah. It, it, yeah. I mean, uh, Fat Tiger, what was it? Can you explain to people what it was? So Fat Tiger was basically um, uh, a collective, um, me. Rello, Joe Fresh Goods, and uh, Dez Money, we all basically had stuff going on and decided to come together and open something up. And that thing we opened up was Fat Tiger. And over that time, we grew, became super successful, and then just decided that it would be best if we took that vehicle and, like, not have to worry about Fat Tiger and just can worry about all the other things that we had going on and kept it going. But we did some amazing things through Fat Tiger. It helped all of us grow. It was a, a beautiful period in Chicago, but we inspired people through doing that. And um, it had its time. That's super dope, man. That's super dope. Um, especially with like the collabs that you've done. So we'll talk about that. And I actually own a pair of a collab that you've done. I don't mm -hmm. have, I don't have the, uh, the superstars. You don't have the superstars. You got the form. I, I have the form lows. And uh, talk about that. How did how did your collabs come to what they are? Um, it all really, really kind of was centered around All Star 2020, which was here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Adidas approached us as Fat Tiger as like kind of a collective, but they wanted us all to take our own takes on different shoes and silhouettes and stories. And so with my shoes, um, the, the superstar and the foreman was just a two-part story. Um, and it kind of basically tied to my two two loves growing up, which was basketball and fashion. Yep. And how they had this weird relationship through a milk crate or a crate, like you know what I'm saying. 
Um, real simple, it was just a crate that we, in the hood, if you didn't have no hoop, you'd go nail a crate up to a light pole in the backyard and go out there and shoot on it and play basketball. When I was growing up as a DJ, everything wasn't digital. You had to have records. So you use those crates, put your records in, and carry them to venues. So it was all kind of how the whole story of Chicago works harder, Chicago plays harder, just basically came out of that aesthetic of, you know, going out, having a good time playing those records, but also working hard on the back basketball court, which is the two shoes was the superstar was that that gray and bright pink to basically like kind of signify like um, records, the record sleeves and those pops of colors that came out on that for the DJ side. And then the uh, form was kind of built in my mind of a, a work boot um, with, you know, the tan upper suede orange safety color and then all the straps that represented like all the things you would see if you were in an alley in Chicago and the uh the um garbage man were coming through because that's my it. yeah that's my yeah. favorite part of the sneaker that's my favorite part because that no who would think of that like yeah, who would, so, yeah that's my favorite part of the shoe yeah so if you outside and you see the truck come through in Chicago the garbage trucks are this bright blue color yeah you got a blue trap the guys are wearing they they vests, which yep. are orange with the lime green. Yep. And the garbage cans are black. Like, so it's just put all those colors to basically tell a part of the story yeah. in the box with the shoes. Just kind of make a cool little tie together with it. So that's super cool because like who would think of that? But like, but the meaning, the the meaning and the message of your shoe is what really that's that's probably it's one of my top five five favorite shoes I have. But yeah, I'm glad, man. I'm glad. But you after you explaining what it meant, because I was like, oh, cool, it comes with straps. You know what I mean? But actually learning the meaning of like what's behind the shoe and why it and why you have the different colors, that is super cool. And yeah, that really man, just yeah, I mean it's just art. Uh, what was your struggles getting into the door? Like struggles getting into um, fashion. I won't really world. necessarily say I, I had struggles because um I kind of always tell people I felt like I did things the right way. Uh -huh. I never came in expecting too much. I came in working. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got into fashion because I was willing to work for free. Okay. Like, I was like, man, I want to learn. So I'm going to come and hang around, hang around the shop, hang around on the road with trade shows, being on the wholesale side. And I just put the work in. I never expected anybody to give me anything. So um, I feel like that's a lot of the barriers people have nowadays because people aren't really as genuine, I guess now. You know, people always want to know what they can get out of a situation. And I never approach things like that. I always approach things about what I can lend to a situation. How can I make it better? That's that's super cool, man. That's super cool. It took me a second. Uh, it took me a second. Um, <laughs> so talking about collabs, do you have any, is there anything future-wise that you're looking at? Is it... Right now, I'm honestly just working on all the projects that I have and just kind of waiting to see what comes through. Really, really not um, super, super focused on that side of the journey, but hopefully something comes up. Um, because, you know, I got the ideas ready, so. He's got them. People, listen. If if we have any designers watching, we might. You never know. Vic Lloyd's yeah, your guy. I Vic got Lloyd, it. I'm ready. Vic Lloyd is your dude. Yeah, you I'm working on some stuff, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll yeah. see what happens. I mean, I'm I'm really excited for the future. But uh, in the meanwhile, I'm going to go grab some chocolate cake. Yeah, man. I want the tiramisu. You want, you, I think that's what you got. Yeah, I think I, I got the chocolate cake. Yeah. <laughs> All right, people. We'll see you there. Yes. All right, man. Peace. All right. Play. Back in play. Eating chocolate cake and tiramisu. Yeah. All right. Little more. Little more. Little more. Uh, new beginnings. New beginnings. New brands. New brands. All right. So, new beginnings. So, after Fat Tiger Coles, I took like a break. Just kind of chilling. Me and my son kind of just. Figuring out what I'm doing, I'm golfing, whole full dad mode. Just when dad, dad mode, mode. wasn't working on nothing. Okay. But I had this old idea that, um, so I started, so also let me, I started a new business. So my new business, well, I partnered with a business, should be what I'm saying, not started. Business is already going. So I'm part of a, a print shop now called Black Cactus Print Shop. Okay. So we print brands for people, help them with their brand journey, do design consulting, the whole nine. So brand from that is my partner with that. Um, 
just asked me that I got had any ideas that I never did that I just kind of wanted to be like, man, yeah, start something. Yeah. And I was like, man, I've been sitting on this idea called free agent that I've been wanting to do forever, like a sports memorabilia type of thing. He was just like, he's like, man, I love the idea. And I just like showed him a couple things and told him a couple stories. And then like he came back and whipped up like this crazy Michael Jordan shirt. So we actually printed it and sold it in a little pop-up we did, very exclusive. Because of how we printed it, we had to print it by hand, jumbo graphic, on the sleeve, all type of stuff. So we did them by hand, we limited the how amount. How many copies did you guys make? How many did you make? We only made like 50. Okay. So we did those and sold those all out over the weekend just to get it out there, just to start. And we did a Walter Payton hoodie. It's going to be like our next release. You'll probably see that online soon. Um, so that's kind of what I've been working on. And then I have my brand Sensei, which is just trying to figure out just trying to figure out where that is going to sit, like what price point, other stuff. So just been really growing these brands, growing this business, growing another brand I have on the golf side, which is called A18. It's a golf community, and we have a brand behind it too. So just trying to grow all these new things and have new opportunities and continue this, this year strong and come into the new year very, very strong. Yeah, so what are some of your goals in them this year as far as moving on with your brand? Uh, so with Free Agent, we're going to officially do like a launch party for it. Hopefully you'll see that in sometime in November. Okay. Um, my birthday is in December, so I always try to drop something around my birthday. Okay. So be on the lookout for that. Okay, that's cool. That's uh, cool. Building this relationship with Sockety, so we'll see if that turns into a shoe or something. I love my... We're going to see if that turns into a shoe or something. Then, uh, still DJing, doing events every week, uh, doing that, uh, headed to Los Angeles, uh, do a event, couple events out there. Um, yeah, so we're really, really trying to finish this year strong and go into the new year with, with just more energy and more excitement. I like that. I'm really excited. Thank I'm really you. excited to see what the future brings for you. Because you're very talented and very creative. Thank you. Yeah, man. So you say you do a little music. How is that? Man? What, what, what got you into all that? It looks like you. So that was like. So stuff. that was my first love. Okay. Because okay. I always loved fashion. Never thought I could make money from it. But I always was into right. music. Had a little studio in my basement when I was growing up. At, like in high school. So I was producing, producing turned into a rapper. I joined the rap group. The rap group fell apart. So I started doing fashion and rapping, and then the fashion thing just kind of took over. So I decided to take my energy and had a couple of mentors along the way to teach me the DJing ropes. And then I just said, man, I want to be in music still. So I DJ and made clothes and kind of worked so I could throw my own events. Main thing that got me into DJing is I wanted to throw parties that people could wear the stuff that we sold at the store back in the days when we did to a lot of clubs where they had dress codes and all that. So I wanted you to be able to come in and wear your hat, come in with your hoodie on, wear sneakers, not have to wear no slacks or steppers to get into a party. Right, so like that, that was the whole idea about me ever throwing parties and getting, I want people to come comfortable. Okay. I like that. I like yeah, that. That's super cool, man. Yeah. Your story that you have, um, as I said, I'm really excited to see you grow. Thank you. I appreciate it. Go keep on going. Yeah, we, we're going to get maybe an invite coming up to when, when, when your new clothing line comes out or at least a, 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 a heads up. Yeah, we're going to post everything. We'll put it on the IG. I'll make sure I send it to you all so you guys will know if it's like on the weekend that y'all can make sure y'all can try to get up and come check it out because it'd be dope for you guys to do a recap on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's cool. Yeah, like, you know, I keep you guys in the loop with everything I'm doing. Definitely going to let y'all know because uh, I have talked to corporate in Indy about doing a pop-up down there. So I definitely let y'all know. Shout out corporate. Yeah, corporate. Matt, Corey, they know my people, my brothers, love them. You know, I'm sorry, like, I'm bouncing around, but <laughs> over time, I mean, you say you started doing the struggle, I mean, you started with fashion, do you think it's uh, involved over time? Like, but getting you know, into fashion? Or yeah, just? getting into fashion, is it, is it easier for people to create? Is it easier for people for, or no? So, that's a double, it's a double-edged sort of a question. Yeah. Because right now, the entry point is as low as it has ever been. Ever. But the idea of it becoming successful is right. harder than ever now. Right, okay. 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 Like, you can get into it easy. Easiest way to get in, because you can get into it with two shirts. Because everybody does color. Because you can print it anywhere. It's instant prints now. You can do, like, a, a direct to garment print. So you can buy two shirts, get two shirts printed. Well, say you get two shirts printed for it, costs you $30, you can go sell those shirts for $40. You sell one of those shirts, you're in it. You made it, so you're in the game. <laughs> yeah. But now, for it to become easy, because my whole thing is, is, 
I say when you get into something, you can look at it as a hobby, but the goal of it is to be able to take care of yourself and your family. Right. And do, doing what you want to do. That's like, being so that's the goal. Being it. successful with it. It's like, being able to take care of yourself and your family. If you can do that, you're successful with it. You know what I'm saying? You know, you might be successful with this person you're looking at up here, but that's success. But it's harder to, I think it's harder now to get to that point than ever because there's so many barriers. Right, right, like, you know right. what I'm saying? It's a lot, a lot of, it's more hard work now to separate yourself because everybody's doing the same thing. Right. Everybody's posting on their IG. Everybody's doing this. They're doing the TikTok. Everybody's doing all this stuff. So what sets you? Set you? Separates you. The people that you connect with in real life is what separates you. So it's really now you got to go back to lower entry point, but you got to go back to doing things that you had to do when the entry point was higher. Reach right. out to stores, travel, have person person relationships. That's fact. Because like me, now I sit down and talk to y'all. If y'all had a store, I know I could call y'all to be like, check out my stuff. Y'all might tell me no, at least I had that relationship. Yes. If y'all tell me no, because y'all have a personal relationship, y'all might tell me who to talk to, who might say yes. yes. And that's the whole thing. But if you just go on the internet and you be like, please buy my stuff, and nobody buys your stuff, you just stuck in this whole thing. Because you don't have connections. Well, you didn't build no relationships. Yeah. And you can build those relationships online. It's just hard. Yeah. It's easier in person. It's easier in person. Look at what we're doing. Exactly. We've talked for about two hours. We didn't record everything, but we talked for about two hours. Yeah, no, it's perfect. It's your city. But uh, where can they find you on Instagram? Uh, on everything, Instagram, Twitter, and even weirdly, I have one thing on TikTok. It's Vic Lloyd. V-I-C-L-L-O-Y-D. On everything. Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, find me. Vic Lloyd. Vic Lloyd on everything. My name is my name. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, I'm really, um, your brands are super cool. Thank you. you just dropped your shirts. Yeah, you just, just dropped. dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah just shirts. dropped. Yeah, you can get that at uh, my new website as well. Nothingbydefault.com. Um, it's going to be our market space that we continue to build brand, brands and place brands on. Need any printing? Black Cactus Print House, find us on IG. Uh, real, you know, check us out. Heat and Soul, I'm part of the family now, so don't be surprised if I pop up and y'all see me interviewing somebody <laughs> with the Clints. I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. No, but it was really cool talking to you, sitting down talking to you, and we need to do another one. We have to do this. We gotta do yeah, dude, I got like stories for like three hours. Yeah, we got So if we ever, if we ever decide. If I do something in Indy, we'll do we'll do one in Indy. We'll we'll, we'll showcase the pop up and we'll talk about some more stuff. We'll be there. We'll please be reporting all of it. Please yeah. come out. Yeah, we'll, we'll, be out. we'll be there. We'll, we'll be all over. Yeah, we'll yeah. Thank you, my man. Yeah, I gotta come see you. Hoop too. Maybe Chicago this year. Oh yeah, if y'all here, let me know. I'm coming. Chicago. Yeah. yeah. All right. If y'all here, let me know. I'm going to be there. That sounds cool. I'm going to be coaching from the, the sidelines, too. Go left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my man. Well, Kenny, did you have fun? Kenny. Of course, of course. I Dad, you have fun? You know it, baby. Always, man. No more Yankees hats, Kenny. <laughs> no more Yankees hats. Turn that backwards. Last time I had a Sox hat on, man. Everybody can't be I'll caught let you, I'll, Chicago. Get you the, I'll let you get away with a Sox. I'll let you get away with a Cincy. Man. No, no, okay, 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 okay. All right. I got you. I no, got you. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thank you. All right. Well, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Go follow him on all social media platforms at Vic Lloyd. Make sure to follow us on social media at Heat and Soul Podcast. And thank you guys for watching. We had a pleasure having a podcast with him. Look, we're looking forward to doing more. Looking forward. Heat and Soul Podcast. We're out. <laughs>